Are you ready for the ultimate treasure hunt? No, I'm not talking about the Ark of the Covenant or the Holy Grail, but I am talking about something super important, finding the right site for your new home. Hi everyone, if you're thinking of building or renovating, then this is the place to be. I am Nikki, and just like Indiana Jones or Lara Croft, you'll need to use all of your skills to succeed with your build. But before you grab your hat and whip or braid your hair, you need to know the most important factor that is often overlooked, home orientation. With the right orientation, you'll unlock the secrets of cross-flow ventilation and sun shading and discover the ultimate treasures of energy efficiency and sustainable living. So grab your map and compass and join us on this wild adventure to create the perfect home, Tomb Raider style. Everyone living in Australia understands how brutal Mother Nature can be, especially right now with torrential rain, flooding, cyclones and heat waves. And in a few months, we will be looking at fires up north and windy hail down south. We are certainly the land of drought and flooding rains. It would make sense that our homes are built to reflect this crazy weather. Unfortunately, most aren't. And there is a misconception that energy efficiency and sustainability can only be achieved with a custom designed home with high end products. Now that is false. Even on a really tight budget, you can save a lot of money on operating costs and be more comfortable in your home if you choose the right block of land with the right design. This is the type of thing that once your house is built, it is really hard to change. So if you get it right from the beginning, you'll be thanking me later. At the end of this video, I will show you some cool shading models showing exactly what I mean by the differences with your orientation of your house. This process is all about taking all of these little puzzle pieces and putting them together to get the best outcome for you. So the first step in this adventure is research. You need to know sun direction, wind direction, external factors like high buildings, flat planes in the areas you want to build. Where is north? Site plans should have a north point on them. But some of them don't. I don't know why. It's a bit crazy. These days, thankfully, Google Maps is really accessible, free, and within enough tolerance will show you where your north point is in relation to the site that you're looking at. So why do you need to know about north? Well, you need to know where the sun rises and sets from. And of course it goes from east to west, right? Wrong. Well, in general terms, it's right, but not really. And let me show you why. So here we have timeanddate.com. And we've set it to Brisbane and it shows us some really cool stuff, namely sunrise, sunset, whichever month you want to, whichever year you want to, what the day length is, uh, what solar noon is. And if you click on a day, it will actually show you what the altitude is at any given time. And if you notice, it's not directly east or directly west. To show this in some more detail, we're going to have a look at Darwin, Brisbane and Hobart and the differences between all three. So if we look at Darwin during the dry season, you can see the angle of sunrise and sunset. It's very different to the sunrise and sunset angle during the wet. So obviously 7 a.m. in the dry, which is winter, is east-northeast, whereas in summer or the wet season, it's east-southeast. So if we're comparing summer in Brisbane with the wet season in Darwin, there's really only a seven degree difference in height. And in terms of the direction, they're pretty much the same. But if we have a look at winter, then we've got a 15 degree difference between Brisbane and Darwin. So the altitude in Darwin is 54 degrees during winter or the dry season and 39 degrees in Brisbane during winter. When we look at Hobart, things get really interesting. So if we compare Hobart in winter with Brisbane in winter, then there's a sizable difference between the altitude. 
Here is the exact same design and the exact same orientation, but we've just changed the location of the building. So when we talk about where your north is and orientating your building to north, it's a little bit more complicated than the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. A famous explorer once said, the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. Be extraordinary. Hit that like button. If you like a sleep in, you're a shift worker or have children who have afternoon naps or go to bed early, then having early morning or late afternoon sun streaming into your bedroom can be a disaster. This is why you need to decide which rooms you want on which sides of the house to maximise light or shading. For instance, afternoon sun in the living room might be better than afternoon sun in the bedrooms. If you intend to night purge, then shading for the office during the day could be more important than shading the bedrooms. Ultimately, there is no hard and fast rule as it all comes down to what you want for each of the spaces. Now, some of you might be asking, Nikki, why haven't you mentioned seasonal temperatures? Adventurer's motto. I regret nothing. Well, the sun is more important than the temperatures. In summer, it's going to be hot. In winter, it's going to be cold. In the tropics, in the wet season, it's going to be hot and humid. In the dry season, it's going to be dry and cold. And yes, I said cold. I'm from Darwin and I still hate the cold and I still get cold up there. So, you know, if you live in Tasmania, I know that's real cold. But that doesn't mean we don't feel it up in Darwin. In terms of design, the actual temperature doesn't really matter. It's more about where the sun is and where the breezes are. So trying to minimise the heat gain in summer and maximise the heat gain in winter is the aim. The actual number of the temperatures is irrelevant because it's going to be different for every single space. For that, we turn to good old Bureau of Meteorology and we search for wind roses. And just like the time and date website, we go through and choose which month or season we want, what time and where, and then we get a rose. Now, the longer the rose is, the more intense, and it will show 9 a.m. in the south, southeast, and east is where we'll get the best breezes in summer. So when we take a look at all of the statistics, this is what we get for Brisbane. You can see it varies quite a bit. So what I would be trying to do here is trying to block the winter breezes coming from the southwest and the west, but trying to get the breezes, especially in the afternoon summer, coming from the northeast and the east. Now, if we compare 3 p.m. summer in Brisbane with Hobart in Darwin, then we can see a huge difference. And this is why it is very important to look at both sun direction and wind direction. In most cases, you won't get this completely 100% and will likely have to compromise some wind in winter for some in summer. But just make sure you prioritise the big consistent directions, otherwise you will be upset that you're missing out. And just like I mentioned before, once you put your building in place, it is very, very difficult to change. So let's put all this together. As promised earlier, here are some cool sun study and breeze comparison. This is one of our Totally Wicked design. Here is north, and this is two different orientations during summer in Brisbane. As you can see, where the shading is and where the breezes are varies a great deal. Here is the same scenario in winter. How totally awesome is that? I love this part of my job. One thing I will say is that the angle of the sun changes a lot more in the southern part of the country than up north. So if you live in the tropics, I would be prioritising large eaves for sun shading all year round and orientating your home to catch the cool breezes. If you live further south, then absolutely I would consider orientating to the winter sun. I hope this shows you that going through these steps I've mentioned will help you get the most out of your design. 
By ensuring your home is correctly positioned, you unlock the power of passive ventilation and sun shading, which will be free for the life of your building, and it should help create a space that is not only sustainable, but a joy to live in. Remember, the key to success lies in searching for the unique wind patterns and sun paths specific to your area, taking into account the regional variations within Australia throughout the year. But if it does get too hot or it does get too cold, you can turn the air conditioning on. It's fine. The whole point of this is to make it so that you're not relying on that active cooling or active heating all the time, thereby saving you money. So grab your backpack, whip and fedora and search for the clues you need to make informed decisions. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell and join in the adventure. Have a totally wicked evening.